Hello and thanks for joining us on The Hustle. Thank you so much for being there. Uh, this is where we get to talk about challenges, successes, and of course, experiences uh, people get and of course they have in different uh, fields of life. Thank you so much for joining us. Joining me this time is a prosthetist and she's Elizabeth Alabi. She's the founder of Help Work. It's an NGO that supports uh, amputees and of course uh, try as much as possible to help amputees get back to life. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, um, Elizabeth Alabi, who is a prosthetist. Yes. This is very uncommon. So who is a prosthetist and who is Elizabeth Alabi? Yes, um, starting with a prosthetist. A prosthetist is someone who is trained to assess, to fabricate a prosthesis, that is an artificial leg or artificial hand for an amputee. So a prosthesis is more or less like an artificial leg, artificial hand that are functional, that brings an amputee back to their field, back to the community, back to their family to be exactly who they are, not as an handicap. Mm. Yes, I'm Elizabeth Alabi. I'm a prosthetist. I was trained at the Federal College of Orthopedic Technology, Igobi, and um, I am a licensed and accredited, accredited member of the MRTB and also the National Association for Prosthetics and Autotists. Okay, so who are the NMRCB? MRTB. MRTB yes. is a Medical Rehabilitation Technology Board, mm -hmm. Therapies Board here. Yeah. They're actually in charge of therapies, like prosthetist is just one of the rehab team. We have medical rehabilitation team, we have mm -hmm. like physiotherapists, we have occupational therapists and the likes. Mm. So prosthetist is one. So we have like five bodies coming together as a therapist. MRTB is actually in charge of the medical rehabilitation board. All right, so I uh, want to be sure this is what you studied in school. Yes. So what prompted this, um, uh, this idea or why did you study this in school? Yes, I studied this in school. At first, when I get into the uh, into the school, I didn't really know much of what I wanted to become a medical doctor. Okay. But when I got there, due to the Nigeria admission, wherever I was still writing jam, and by the time I got to my year two in school, I met a patient. You know, the first year is on every medical school. You are taught the basic things like chemistry, and you don't actually know what you are doing is into but in my year in my year two i met an amputee and i saw the amputee walking mm. i was like how come okay there is a prosthesis okay so this is what i'm actually here to do that means this will touch life i want to touch life i want people to feel my impact i don't want to i want to, i don't want to do what is more of common common let me touch people's life in a different way mm. and this actually bring the interest and then i stopped writing jam so I put my concentration on okay. that and I start and from there okay. I'm here today. And we're talking about um, amputees. Yes. How do we categorize them? Can we also call them the physically challenged persons? Yes, amputees are physically challenged persons. And when we talk about physically challenged persons, they are persons mm -hmm. that cannot do some physical activities due to a kind of maybe limitations in the part of the body. Okay. And so amputees also are in, the, are in this category. When we say an amputee, an amputee is somebody whose leg or hand is missing. A part of the body, leg or the hand is missing. And if a part of the body is missing, definitely there's some physical activities that will be a challenge to such person. So it does not matter if it's just the leg or the arm. Most of the time people think, oh, once the leg, so it's any part of the body. Yes, once a part of the body is missing okay. and it's affecting a physical activity, then such a person is an amputee. All right. All right, let's look at um, um, what you are doing as a prosthetist. All right. Now, um, how have you been able to touch lives? 
lives of amputees. What exactly are you doing to touch their lives? Yes, the way we touch lives of amputees as a prosthetist is when we meet amputees, we know that they can actually go beyond their physical disability. Mm. In the state of their physical disability, they can actually go beyond it to do the extraordinaries that they think they cannot do, and which is getting a prosthesis. If it is a lower limb amputee, like somebody who is having a missing leg, okay. then, okay, a lower limb prosthesis or an artificial leg will be fabricated for such a person. Then, once it is fabricated, it is our duty to train the person to use it. Mm. So the person must actually undergo a training to use the prosthesis again. So once the person undergoes the training, yes, the person is back to the community, the person is back to the work, back to the family, can do almost everything mm. that people around us are doing. And I will take it from there. Uh, oftentimes, people or some amputees actually think it is expensive to get um, some of these artificial limbs we are talking about. Yeah, so uh, what exactly, how are you coming in to ensure that? Okay, because we they have... Of course, you and I know that we have lots of persons who are amputees, yes. and of course, they look forward to have artificial limbs so that yes. they can get back on their feet. So, how do you come in as a prosthetist? Uh, pro yes. So, how do you come in? Yes, um, when we come to prosthesis, prosthesis is actually the artificial leg. It is expensive. We will not deny that fact. And for this reason, um, an average African amputee cannot afford it. Mm. And when we meet amputees at times, when we see them begging on the road, it's not because they don't wish to have the leg. They wish to have one, but they cannot afford. And since they cannot afford it, that is one of the reasons why we have help work. Okay. So help work is coming in to raise funds for these amputees to ensure that they can also get a limb and come back to the community. Mm. If an amputee cannot get a leg to come back to the community. In our community, that means the rate of poverty will keep increasing. You cannot imagine a man who is, a, who is the breadwinner of the house is now an amputee and cannot go back to work. Definitely the household will suffer. Mm -hmm. The children will suffer. The wife will suffer. The community also will suffer for that. And so Epoch is coming in to help these people. They are not... They, once they get their prosthesis, then they cannot say they are handicapped again. Okay. They cannot say they are physically challenged again. They can come back to the community. They can do their work. They can fetch for their family. They can do every necessary thing to do and to be responsible for people around them. Wow. And so this is what help work is all about. So in a way, this um, actually helps uh, the development of the society. Yes. In a way, it also contributes to the economy because yes. when people work, we have more people are working and of course are contributing back into the society exactly. you know as we speak now we have a whole lot of persons begging mm -hmm. and that has become an industry so yeah, to speak yeah. now um, I want you to uh, look at okay before I go to this can you tell us the the, the least amount that can be used to get an artificial name what's the least amount yes to Since get, we, we want to say that, oh, it's quite expensive. Yeah, it's quite expensive. To get a good artificial limb for a below knee patient, a below knee patient will be looking at something like 800,000 naira. For just one artificial limb? For just one. For mm. just one. Okay. And for an above knee patient, say above knee, when it go beyond the knee, okay. then for an above knee patient, an above knee patient will be looking at 2 million naira, mm. which... Even a civil servant in Nigeria, I'm very sure they can't afford that. That's what the limb. It doesn't matter whether it's the arm or <laughs> it does, it, the, the ear. The upper or... limb is actually much more expensive than the lower limb. Okay. Because to get a functional upper limb, that means you are going for something like a myoelectric, and we call it myoelectric if you want it okay. to be functional. And to get a myoelectric, and even right from buying, because most components we import it, okay. right from buying, we buy at the rate of 10 million. And so for a patient to get that, definitely that patient needs financial support. Okay, how long have you been doing this? And um, uh, you, you, can you give an example of uh, uh, persons you have assisted in the past and all that? Yes, um, I've been into this, into the profession about six years ago. Okay. I've been practicing. 
but the NGO started last month 